All right, guys, we're here with college junior for the second year, Brendan Van Bell. Um, you guys probably know Brendan because he's at the facility literally every day, um, you know, working out, training, hitting, all that fun stuff. So we're going to have some questions prepared after, you know, we talk a little bit. We're going to let you guys jump in and, and talk to him, too. Really, the biggest goal for this is for you guys to realize, you know, what it's like, um, growing up wanting to play college baseball, what it's like in the recruiting process, and what college baseball is actually like. Um, this is the first similar session that we're doing, but we're going to be having a bunch of college players, college coaches, and then pros on over the next couple of weeks um, just to share some insights that hopefully you guys can, can use for your benefit. All right. Um, you ready, Brennan? Yep. You want to say anything before we get rolling? No, what's going on, guys? All they're they're muted, so they're not really going to be an answer. <laughs> All right. So first thing, Brandon, why don't you just give you know, a brief overview of, of, you know, who you are in case some of these guys don't know you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Brendan Van Bell uh, from Garner Valley. I graduated in 2016. And then I went on to Cabrini University. It's up by the King of Prussia Mall. So I, this year should be my senior year. I got hurt my freshman year. So I got a red shirt. And now I'm a junior again. Oh, so you're a fifth year junior. Kind of. Yeah. So I'm That's probably going to stay for a six year too. <laughs> Better go to masters. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so Brennan, obviously this starts from, you know, you fall in love with the game at an early age, I would guess. Why don't you kind of take us through, you know, the younger years of you playing, you know, were you always the best player? Did you play travel? Did you play a few different sports? You know, what, what did that look like growing up? Uh, yeah. So I played travel up at George. Hey, uh, I play travel uh, through BYC. It's by me. It's uh, Brandywine Youth Club. So I played there probably up until I was middle schoolish, and then I went to MSI and started playing there. Uh, wasn't always the best player. I guess I was probably one of the better players in like little league. But as I got older, the talent started to sort of even out. Uh, sorry, what was the other part of the question? George threw me off. Did, like, did you play a couple sports? Were you just a baseball player? Uh, I played a couple of different sports up until sophomore year of high school. Then I okay. just transitioned right over to baseball and started doing that year round. Uh, played football and basketball. Wasn't my cup of tea and I wasn't very good at it. So I figured I'd direct myself into one thing. Yeah, that's a good call. And probably a good age for, for a lot of you guys thinking about like when you should just focus on one sport, you know, that freshman, sophomore year of high school. Um, so obviously, um, at what age did you figure out that you wanted to play in college? Like, was it something that you figured out very early or is it something that, you know, when you got into high school, you made it a goal for yourself? Uh, probably right around like my eighth grade year, right going into high school. So when I decided like this is probably something that I could, that I want to do and something that I think I could do. I just didn't really know the process of it. And so I went to MSI and sort of had that direction from like the first guys that were there. Um, and then from then it was just like playing on the teams and getting exposure in front of coaches, different stuff like that. Cool. Well, why don't you, you, know, you mentioned exposure and, and kind of how it picked up throughout high school. Can you kind of talk through that? Like, when did you start hearing from coaches? Did you go to a lot of showcases? Events, uh, yeah, you know? I went to pretty much every showcase in like this region, I guess you could say. Uh, <laughs> wasn't really, wasn't really anything that I was sort of nailing down, like going to one or targeting one specific school. Like I literally emailed every school around here and just saw what event they were going to be at. And I went and just sort of played and whoever I could talk to, I talked to them. Nice. So if you were going to kind of go back and do that process again, what do you think you would change? Uh, probably my direction and how I like went about it. Like I probably would have narrowed down more schools within like division two or division three and just sort of focused on them rather than just saying like, I'm going to email Cal Berkeley and see if, see if they're around. Right. So it's just like sort of getting a perspective on it, but it worked out. So just, yeah, for sure. So if you were to give these guys advice, it would just be to, you know, figure out what you want and then, you know, focus your attention and energy on figuring out how to get in contact and in front of those schools. Yeah. And be right? realistic. Like I hate to sound like a Debbie Downer, but not everybody's going to, not everybody's going to play at the Vanderbilt or not everybody's going to go to the show. So you just sort of have to be realistic with your, with your level of that you can play at and go from there. 
For sure. And I think the other other part to that is guys have to realize that, you know, the college that they go to, that doesn't mean that that talent level for them will stay the same. You know, baseball is a crazy sport and you see guys that are junior college, division two, three, one, whatever, um, just take off. You know, unfortunately, the recruiting process nowadays is like, who's the best 15, 16 year old, not who the best 22 year old is. And a lot of times there's a, a really big gap. Um, so I think some guys go division three or go division two and think like, okay, my career's done when in the grand scheme of things, that's not true. And especially if you don't want it to be true and you work hard enough to, to kind of change um, who you are over the next four years. Absolutely. Because especially with the way the baseball draft is going, you know, there's going to be a, just a boatload of undrafted guys that sign. Um, and I guarantee there's a bunch of division three players in there too. Um, so why did you end up picking Cabrini? Yeah. Uh, honestly, I picked Cabrini because I got a call from the coach. And it was first first ever program. Didn't have a team before that. And I was the first guy that he reached out to. So I saw, saw that as a cool opportunity to sort of start, start something. Um, I had other opportunities, but I didn't really – I thought Cabrini was the best spot because, like I said, it was a new, it was a new team. And it was close to home, not too far. It's like 35, 40 minutes away. Um, and I thought it's just something that I could comp- compete in and hold my own. But I think the big, okay. the big time factor was the, uh, like the first ever team. Yeah, that's really interesting, and definitely not something a lot of these guys will have the opportunity to do. You know, it's pretty rare to be, you know, the first recruiting class um, of a baseball program. I mean, did you visit a lot of schools, talk to a lot of coaches, or were you pretty sure Cabrini was it? You know early on um, uh, I visited I mean period. I visited a bunch I visited uh, schools like Millerville Millersville like all the PSAC schools right um, I mean I visited other division one schools but that's just because we were there playing like LaSalle and Villanova right um, but I think once I once I saw Cabrini and once I met the coaching staff and all that different stuff like just seeing the area it's just something that I felt comfortable with right off the bat like I didn't it wasn't too big it wasn't too small the location was really cool so I just think it fit for me. It fit for me talent-wise and lifestyle-wise. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's a really nice area up there. You know, for these guys that are you know going to be visiting schools for you know the first time, whether they're juniors or, or freshmen, what are some you know things that you think that they should look at or consider when they're walking around these campuses? Uh, ask a ton of questions. If I get like, there's sometimes where I go on recruiting tours up at school now, and the kids don't have any questions and they just like sort of walk around and just like nod their head ask as many questions as you can because that's if that's a school you're going to go to you're going to be there for at least a year so you got to ask as many questions as possible find out what you like what you don't like how the area is don't be scared to i mean they can't lie to you they got to be honest so don't yeah, don't sure. any questions think, yeah i mean i think that's a great point for a lot of you guys or, or pretty much everyone unless you have some crazy life-changing circumstance i don't know about like picking a college is going to be the biggest decision you have to make for a while so to just walk around on campus, like, like Brandon said, and then ask questions is, you know, you're kind of cheating yourself. Um, you're not going to be able to make the best possible decision because you're not going to be informed. So what are some good questions that you'd, you'd want to hear or if you were going through the process that, that you would hear that you would ask yourself? Uh, I mean, just like lifestyle wise, like how's life like on, like for us, everything's on campus. Like we're not really located in like a town or anything like that. It's just our own little gated community. Uh, so a lot of questions that I asked were, like, what's the lifestyle like? Like, do people hang out? Is there anything like socially that's going on in the dorms or on campus or what's around close to here? House of food, because most college cafeteria food isn't that good. Um, just different stuff like that. Like just anything that you would do in your day-to-day life, at bring that up because that's where you're going to be for the foreseeable future. So ask about the dining hall, ask about where things are that you can go to. Like for us, we have the mall that's right down the road. So that's a that's a big go-to spot for a lot of kids that don't really have things to do socially on campuses. They just go to the King of Russia Mall and wander around there. Yeah, those are all good points. I mean, guys have to realize that you're not just picking a college because of um, the baseball program. You know, there's a lot more that goes into it. And you know, if you're unhappy on campus, you're probably not going to be too happy with the baseball program. You're not going to be able to, to, to work hard and perform as well as you would if you were in a, a good environment. Um, so getting, getting to campus, Brennan, obviously you had your idea of what college baseball was like. What was that idea like and what was the reality of it? Uh, 
so coming from like high school and like travel ball, I had like that whole, that perspective of it. Cause that's all I really ever played. And then I got to college and it did a complete 180. It's, it's totally different uh, from like a baseball style wise, like a gameplay wise. It's like when you're in the recruiting process, it's all about like yourself and yeah, winning's still important, but it's more about showcasing yourself and uh, being a prospect for coaches. Whereas once you get to college, like you're already there, now your main goal is to win. So you got to buy into that, that program's particular way they go about that. Nice. So, um, you know, you've been in college for, this is your fourth year, right? How did your self as a, a player, person, leader, whatever, change from freshman year to now? Like, what are some things you wish your freshman you knew that you know now? Uh, probably that the coaches, that whatever the coaching staff tells you, they're not just doing it just to, to blow smoke or to just get their way. Like, they actually have an idea of what they're talking about as funny as that may sound <laughs> so to, to trust your coaches is what well, you're telling me freshman year like the first thing he yeah I, like freshman year the first thing our coach told us was like you got to buy into the details and it's like the little things that's gonna that's gonna matter in winning games and I mean being an 18 year old you're like yeah man like whatever you got it and then you don't buy into the details and as you like as a four-year guy now I really notice like wow like had that guy not made that ball and dirt read and then the next guy hit a ball at the middle, we probably don't tie the game up. Like it's just a little thing like that, that really, that are the determining factor in winning and losing games. Yeah, that's crazy. As guys get, the talent gets better and better, the, the really small things matter more and more. You, know, you mentioned dirt ball reads. What are some other examples of, of small things you've noticed that can really impact the game positively and negatively? Uh, bunting. We do a ton of bunting. I've, I've seen other co or other teams do it as well. Um, didn't like coming in as a freshman, didn't really see the amp or the emphasis or point on bunting. But over time, like I said before, like being a four year guy, the last game we played, or the second to last game before we played, before the season got canceled, we played Rowan and top 25 team in the region in the country. They came out and they got a guy on first, they stole second, they bumped him over to third, they hit a sack fly, and they beat us. So that's just taking like a top 25 team in the country and being like, they're, they're doing what we want to do, but they're perfecting it at that level. Uh, the bunting, like I said, is huge. The bunt defense is even more crucial because you got to be able to defend the bunt. Um, just like paying attention to little things, like stuff that I never noticed or even knew existed, to be honest, in high school and when I was a freshman, uh, like stealing bases, like reading that off the pitcher. We do things like uh, early work where we – we have a pitch on the mound, you watch them come set, and most guys, when they go to the plate, they turn their shoulders or they dip their shoulders. So you can read that real early, and that buys you another split second or even a full second to steal a bag. So it's just different. It's literally the little nuanced things that really matter. Yeah, no, that's really cool. And, guys, I'm sure you've, you've heard the little things matter, but I think it's cool to hear that from, you know, someone who probably didn't play as much as they wanted when they were younger um, because they weren't paying attention to little things. and. I would imagine that you'd say you're very good at little things now, or you're trying to be very good, and obviously you're playing more and more. Yeah, I call out Derpo Reads when I play the show, so that tells you how much I <laughs> There you yeah. go. Um, so, th like, all the little things you mentioned were things that happen in-game for the most part. What are some things that would happen you know, in practice in the weight room, smaller things that might not seem like a big deal, but when they're added up, they really are. Does anything come to mind? Uh, attendance, just being there. It's amazing how many guys – don't have a spot in the lineup or on the team and they wonder why, but then you look around and you look at the early work or you look at the, in the weight room and they're not there. And it's like, well, I mean, you don't do the little things off the field. How do you expect to do the little things on the field? So as long, I mean, we have a simple rule. Like if you show up, you're doing the bare minimum. So if you come to practice and you're participating in practice, you're doing the bare minimum. So it's just building on top of the work that you do in practice or in the weight room that really it's a little thing that comes into play. For sure. So I think a lot of these guys are used to starting like every single game, you know, whether it's travel, high school, whatever. Um, and most of your college players will for the most part until they get to college. So what kind of advice do you have for these guys, um, you know, for the first time, you know, opening day, first week, first month, now finding themselves in the lineup every single day, like they've been used to for the first 
you know, 10 years of their baseball career. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would say don't be discouraged. I mean, we have this meeting uh, before every first game of the year where uh, we sit down and, I mean, you sort of already have an idea of what the lineup's going to be, what the defensive positioning is going to be. And you can see, like, the guys that aren't in the lineup sort of, they come in looking a little discouraged, but it's about just staying upbeat and staying positive because, at least in our program, we we can make defensive switches in a moment's notice. So you always – you know that you have a spot to fight for, so you just got to keep showing up and just battling for it. I mean, this year we had – we played 13 games and we used four different third basemen. So, I mean, if somebody's not getting the job done, you're going to get a shot. So. It's just about staying positive, and just because you don't have a spot on opening day doesn't mean the work has to stop to keep going after that spot. For sure, and that's what happened to you last year, right? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I wasn't playing for about like the first half of the year, and then I uh, I hit for the cycle in a JV game, and then the next day it came out, and I played in a varsity game, and I went four for six, I think, and then I just had that spot ever since, but I mean, every day I showed up to the park and I would always hear a chirp or a comment where it's like, your spot's on the line today, buddy. You better you better come through. So, I mean, it's just little things like that that add, all the work adds up to. Yeah, for sure. So, guys, I think a lot of people think that, you know, you earn your chance to start in-game. And that's definitely not the case in college when you have rosters that are, you know, 35, 40. Brendan, what, what's your roster at? Uh, 43. Right, 43. Like, if you do the math, there's no way to get that many guys into a varsity game. So practice, like Brandon said, JV opportunities, um, that, that's really where you, you earn your spot. So even if you're not playing, whether it's college, whether it's high school, or even for travel ball, you know, you earn time and you earn the right to play, not in-game. And then the game time is the time to, to kind of lock, lock your spot in. Um, the next Your thing, attitude Brandon, has a big proportion on that. Sorry not to cut you off. No, good. We uh, we had a kid this year. He was a freshman. Um, it's probably like five six, a so buck fifty, and he plays third base. But I mean, he's obviously a little bit down there on the depth chart because he's a freshman and he's still young, getting to know all that stuff. Uh, but every day, this kid would show up to practice and wouldn't say a word, wouldn't say anything. Would just do his uh, do his early work, do his stretches, go into practice and. I mean, he was a good player, but you never really noticed him. And we were down in Florida, and he came up to pinch hit with, I think, the guys on second and third, and came through and hit a line drive up the middle and scored two runs. And, I mean, that was his opportunity because he, he worked hard in practice, and he didn't say anything. He wasn't, he wasn't noticeable in a bad way, but he was noticeable in an attitude way where the coach felt that he could get the job done, that he earned his right to, to get a little, uh, little tick. Yeah, and no, I think that's really interesting. So a lot of these guys are going to be on college campuses as freshmen in baseball programs and, you know, anywhere. I'm just looking at the couple guys I can see, you know, one to, to five years from now. As an upperclassman, what would be your advice for these guys, you know, day one, first practice, first lifting session um, on how to act, how to behave? Uh, just be a sponge. I mean, it's it's real easy to come in and – to have like a not a bad attitude but not the right attitude and just think like oh I was the man in high school like I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna act that same way in college where it doesn't really work that way you just sort of gotta I mean as a young guy you just gotta bite the bullet and be the young guy for a little while and not really run your mouth or cause trouble just do what you got to do and go about your daily daily duties as it is I think that's awesome pay your dues there you go yeah I mean not really it's not really uh a, a enlightening part of college but everybody's got to do it <laughs> for sure for sure so let's um let's switch to kind of a day in the life so why don't you take us through you know the fall the winter and in season you know what the, what those typical days would look like for you uh sure so we can start with the fall so normally our fall season starts a little bit later starts like the first week of october uh, so you have about a month where you just sort of have to focus on school and lifting. And we have like open work, we call it, where all of us just go to the field, no coaches, and we just sort of take BP, take fungos, do whatever we got to do. Uh, normal day for me is, I mean, we can start with like a Monday in the fall. 
We normally have lifting at 8.15, so I'll wake up at about 6. I'll make some breakfast. I'll make my food for the day. Drive to school, lift from 8.15 to 9.15. And then I've, like this last semester, I had class at 11. So I would do homework or read a book until 11. Go to class, 11 to 12.30. Uh, go to early work around 1. And then that was my that was my day for the fall. It's pretty much broken up like that. Like when you're not in a season, like fall or uh, like actual season spring, it's sort of your day's up to you. Uh, I mean, we always do early work and we do stuff like that just to sort of stay engaged and stay around one another. But once practice starts, that's when it really like kicks in. Like a, a normal day in the fall with practice is same thing. Like I'll wake up at about six, make some breakfast, make my food for the day. Uh, go to lifting, go to class, and then once like 2.30 hits, I'll probably head over to the field and hang out in the clubhouse with the guys until about 3, 3.15, and then that's when we get started with with early work or with practice. Nice. So before you get into the winter, guys, each division is going to have a different amount of time they can spend with you in the fall and the winter. Um, so Brennan's talking about Division three. It looked a little different between uh, Division two, Division one, and also junior college. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure that – sorry, go ahead. No, I was gonna say after the fall season ends, you know, how does your schedule change? Uh, like after we're done with the fall season? Yeah. The then it's just it's just sort of back to like before the fall season where you have lifting and you have to go to class. Um, it's kind of tough to do like open work at the field, so sometimes we'll hit in our gym, uh, in the cage, or if it's nice enough, we can go outside and take fungos or throw. Um, so I mean, it's just sort of it's same stuff in the winter just no practice so really a lot of this is you being motivated enough to to make sure you're getting your own work in yeah i mean you only get for us for division three it's 16 days in the fall yeah. so i mean that's spread out over a month and a month and a half a little less month yeah so like you got to figure like that's one month where you're doing baseball and then the rest is up to you um so yeah the, i mean the motivation and the onus is really on the individual Awesome. So let's uh, let's go to this season. And for you guys that are listening, so Division Three plays 40, Division Two plays like 55, Division One I, I think is in the, the mid 60s. But really, the schedules are going to be very very similar. Um, it's just going to be the amount of games that are being played. So what Brennan's going to tell you about in season is going to be very close, um, regardless of the division. So in season, uh, take us away. Yeah. So normally we'll uh, we'll start out. We go to Florida for this year. We went for nine, eight days, eight days. Yeah, we played nine games in eight days. Um, that's a grind in and of itself. I mean, you got to figure you're playing at least a double header, or maybe more. Uh, in the season, I mean, you normally have one to two midweek games, maybe like a Monday and a Wednesday, or just a Wednesday, and then you'll play a double header or three games set across the weekend. This year, this year, what we did was we did one. One Friday, two Saturday. Yeah, I think that's what we did. It changes every year. How does it fit with classes? How does it fit with classes? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sort of depends, like, how you – we have a meeting at the beginning with, like, uh, she's our academic athletic advisor. So she sort of tells us – we get pre-registration, so she sort of tells us, like, where to – what times, what classes to pick um, because of practice, because of games. So we practice at 3 three o'clock every day so if you're picking your classes you probably want to try and either get early classes or classes that are at night um with classes that i mean what do you mean by that just like in regards to the work or like uh, no really just so these guys can understand what an in-season day would look like for you like how, how, uh, tough do you mean, think, how tough do you think it is to manage school and baseball in season uh it's i mean it's tough but i mean if you're motivated enough it shouldn't be too tough in my opinion, I guess. Um, I mean, you, if you have a if you have class on a game day, like most of the time, if we play at home at three, we have to be there at noon. So, I mean, you're probably gonna unless you have class at eight fifteen or nine forty for us, you're gonna uh, you're gonna miss class. So you just meet up with your professors or email them beforehand, uh, let them know that you're gonna be absent because of a, an athletic game. And either they send you the work that you have to make up or they give you like an alternative assignment to do. I haven't really had many bad experiences with missing class because of games. Most 
most professors are understanding, but there's always the select few that aren't on board with athletics. For sure. Now, does your, your coach do anything as far as like the academic monitoring? Do you guys have study halls or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we have one study hall a week. It's mandatory for the entire team, regardless of your grade or your, your GPA. Uh, as far as the monitoring goes, he, our coaching staff is very happy with that. Uh, actually, we just had our midterm phone calls yesterday. Um, so, I mean, he's always on top of it. He's always getting academic updates through our advisors or through our professors. Um, and that's just another, that's just another excuse or reason for you to play or to not play. Um, we always talk about our coaching staff always talks about like being dependable and having dependability. So if they, if they can't depend on you to at least get good grades in the classroom, how can they depend on you to come into the game and, and perform when they need you to? So, I mean, it kind of sounds out there, but it makes sense at the same time if you think about it. Yeah, for sure. So say you're being lazy one week and you skip a couple classes, you know, what kind of repercussions, if any, do you think you, you have? Like you lose playing time, um, did your coach find out? Yeah, he mo I mean, most of the time he finds out. I haven't run into an instance where um, I've missed class because of that. Um, most of the time it's you sit out of practice for a day and you sit in the press box and do homework, um, which isn't very fun. I've never had to do that, but I can't imagine sitting in the press box and watching everybody else play is fun. Um, if it's continuous, then he suspends you for games or road trips. And we haven't really run into an instance where somebody's had to be let go because of that. But I mean, that's always an option. You can't really bring the whole team down because you don't want to do it. For sure. So you're not just playing baseball in college. You're actually going to class and making sure you get grades too. Yeah, it's it's actually funny because uh, I mean, it's only division three, but um, I mean, like you can't just go there and play a sport and not have good grades. The NCAA will not let you. <laughs> you have to have a minimum GPA. For sure. So what Brendan means there, guys, if you fall under a certain GPA, you're actually not allowed to participate. So you literally can't play in college if you get bad grades. Um, so one of the guys, Brendan, asked what your major was. So can you, can you uh, talk through that? Like, did you know what you want to do right when you got to college? Have you changed it a few times? Uh, yeah, so my major is exercise science and health promotion. Um, it's basically an emphasis on strength and conditioning. I sort of had an idea going in. And then, I mean, I'd been at MSI since I was like 14 or 15. So I knew Rob and Rob sort of talked me through the whole process of like being a strength coach and um, all that type of responsibility and stuff. So I was really interested in that. So that's what I, I picked my major. I didn't pick it right away. I took my gen eds my freshman year. Um, and then I declared my major sophomore year. Nice. So I'm sure a lot of these guys have no idea what they want to do. Do you think that's a big deal? Kind of going through this process once already no not at all i mean uh it, like your freshman year i i had an idea like i said but i wasn't like sold on it so i didn't want to commit and then have to change and go through that whole process so i just took my gen eds and i got a feel for like all the different majors that i could take like i took a couple criminal justice classes i took a couple uh exercise science classes so i sort of took whatever i could just to get a feel for what i liked the most and then uh, I went from there, like my sophomore year. So you don't have awesome. to, I mean, there's no rush to decide what you want to do with the rest of your life. Right. Do you have any tips for these guys um, as they're trying to figure out what they want to do? With their, like their majors or their with careers? Their major, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, just find something that you're really interested in. Like the biggest thing that Rubina told me was you're going to do this for the rest of your life. So, I mean, you got to pick something that you're going to wake up every day and feel the motivation to do. And I mean, I like to exercise. I like to work with athletes and work with other people. So that's sort of something that I really didn't mind incorporating into my life. That's just about what you're interested in. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And obviously you guys are gonna have to think about it. I think one of the most beneficial things and Brendan touched on it is to talk to somebody who does it every day. You now you can, can read a book or an article about professions, but at the end of the day, you know, talking to a bunch of people um, in the profession or in different professions, I think is really valuable. Um, so Brett, we've, we're at 30 minutes. We'll take another couple questions and we'll let you guys go. Um, got a question from the group and if anybody else has some type a couple down, um, how do you lift in season? Uh, I guess lifting compared to baseball drills. What is that ratio like? 
Oh, you mean like lifting? I'm assuming you mean like lifting specific exercises. Um, think just think about like the amount of time you have. How much do you spend lifting, and how much do you spend on baseball? Oh, uh, it's I'd say it's pretty evenly split. I mean, we have a strength coach at school who is actually where Rabini used to work is Cabrini. Um, so this guy not learned everything from uh, Rob, but he I think he took a decent amount from Rob. Um, I mean, it's basically the same workouts that you guys would do at MSI. And then we go to practice and it's pretty, I mean, we do baseball drills. I would say the same amount as we do weightlifting because they both work in conjunction with one another. How important do you think lifting is to you know your development as a player? Uh, I think it's crucial. Uh, I mean, it's not only an in injury prevention, but it's also just something that's going to help you perform on the field. I mean, you can't hit the ball over the fence unless you're strong enough to do it, right? So you got to get in there and you got to be strong enough to do it. Yeah, and I think that's awesome. And I think lifting is one thing that's missed by a lot of the baseball community. And like you said, at the end of the day, if you want to hit the ball hard, throw hard, or run fast, you, you need to be strong. You need to be explosive. And some guys are going to have that naturally to an extent, but most guys are going to have to sweat for it. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Yeah, absolutely. Type it in or, or shout it out. If not, Brennan, any words of wisdom? Any parting words for these guys? Uh, yeah, I guess the one last thing that I would talk about is when you, any team you're on, uh, whether it's like a travel team or your high school team, uh, more specifically, I'd say in college is you got to know your role and don't be scared of that role. Um, sort of like we talked about earlier, whether you're in the lineup opening day or you're not, that doesn't really matter in terms of how you are as a player, who you are as a player. You just got to keep showing up every day and somebody's going to notice it, but don't uh, don't shy away from your role is something that I would leave you with. Awesome. I appreciate it. So, guys, I'm sure you'll see Brendan around the facility at some point. Um, thank you all for tuning in, and have a good day. See you, Thanks, Yep.